Well then, let me be clear. My mother and sister are going to live together with us from now on. If you don't like it, sleep outside. Brandon was making a face as if saying, isn't that impossible? And sported a mean, ugly laugh. I was just a convenient wife for Brandon, and it was normal for me to be subjected to such insulting words every day. However, I could no longer endure this. If that's the case, I'll sleep outside starting tonight. Don't complain about who I'm with. There's no way I would complain. Do whatever you want. Brandon snorted and laughed at my statement. But the next morning, when he saw the garden, he panicked and regretted his words. My name is Noel Harris. I am 42 years old and work as a professional freelance illustrator. As I grow older, I gain more experience and manage to secure a sufficient income while working efficiently at home. I live comfortably in an urban area with my husband, Brandon, and we enjoy the freedom of our own private life together. Originally, I would have liked to have children, but Brandon preferred a life without children and clearly did not want to have them. On the other hand, my mother-in-law, Martha, who did not understand our lifestyle, always nastily said, a daughter-in-law who does not bear children is useless. In the old days, you wouldn't have been able to complain even if you were divorced. Every time we visited my in-laws, it was always unpleasant, and her sharp tongue tormented us. My sister-in-law, Rita, who also has a difficult personality, belittled my work, saying, Drawing illustrations at home is like child's play, isn't it? I envy you for getting paid for doodling, but you don't make much, right? After all, you're just relying on my brother. I wouldn't understand because our educational backgrounds are different. In reality, Rita didn't know that I earn as much as or more than Brandon, especially during busy periods when I make more profit than he does. Brandon always stood by me, saying, Noelle is a precious daughter from another family. Such rude actions towards someone who has married into our family are unacceptable. This temporarily silenced Rita and my mother-in-law. However, they did not find it amusing when my father-in-law took my side, and in his absence, they secretly harassed me. While I felt like this was a vicious cycle, I was deeply grateful for the support of my father-in-law. If there's any consolation, it's that fortunately, we rarely saw them as my in-law's home was several hours away by train. This distance usually allowed us to avoid their unpleasant comments and attitudes, and major troubles were rare. However, one day, while I was deeply engrossed in my illustration work at home, I received a sudden call from my husband. What do you mean, your father has passed away? I was at a loss for words at the unbelievable news. It seems that his condition had worsened without us noticing. Afterward, caught up in arranging the funeral and other preparations, I had no time to mourn and just spent being busy day after day. As a result, I couldn't return home for a while. The reason I was busy was because Martha and Rita dumped all the troublesome matters on me, showing no intention of helping. I had never imagined so much work would be necessary when a person dies. While going through these experiences, my strength quickly drained in just a few days. After managing to send my father-in-law off on his final journey, I returned home and finally thought I could settle down and confront my grief when an unexpected proposal was made. Only my mother and sister are left in that house. I'm worried about them, so let's move back home," Brandon suddenly said. I was shocked and replied, what? Why all of a sudden? What about your job? Brandon proudly said, don't worry, I've already secured a job at a company run by a friend back home. All arrangements are made. You can work remotely, so it doesn't matter where we live, right? There's absolutely no problem, so rest assured. Knowing that he had planned everything without consulting me, I felt angry at Brandon's unilateral decision. He was not listening to my objections and had already started preparing to move. Reluctantly, I also began packing. Originally, Brandon insisted on living together with his parents, but I firmly refused and said, then I will stay here. Eventually, we decided to rent an apartment a little away from his parents' house, and we moved there. However, even after the move, Martha and Rita frequently visited without reason, disrupting my work. 
Their sudden visits made it difficult for me to concentrate on my tasks, causing frequent interruptions and irritation. Since they are not working at the moment, it seems they have a lot of free time on their hands. I have repeatedly asked them indirectly to refrain from visiting so often, but it seems my requests were not fully understood as they came over almost every day and spent their time as they pleased. But that was not the only source of stress. When local residents saw me, they started whispering among themselves. People from the city stand out here. Noel, you're a bit out of place. You need to make more effort to blend into the community, they said. When I told Brandon about this, Martha and Rita, who happened to be there, threw sarcastic comments at me. Do I really stand out? The presence of Martha and Rita was already a source of stress, and feeling like I had no allies around, I regretted moving to the countryside and let out a big sigh. One day, without any special reason, Martha and Rita came over again. Aren't there any sweets here? You should be a bit more considerate. We are guests, after all. Shouldn't you have prepared something? Martha began rummaging through the kitchen cabinets and invited and continuously voiced her complaints. It's difficult to patiently endure such demanding visitors, and I sighed internally. Meanwhile, Rita sat down on a chair, lacking manners, and suddenly demanded money from me. Hey, Noel, could you lend me some money? What? I was surprised by her abrupt request and asked, I'm going to New York City soon. I'm planning to go to a theme park with a friend who lives there. I'm asking for money for the trip, Rita said, as if it was natural to ask for money. I was simply astonished by her brazen request and found myself arguing back. Why don't you consider working and earning your own money? That way, you'd have more money to spend freely. However, my suggestion only angered Rita. She abruptly stood up from her chair and, hitting the desk with force, yelled at me. You're lecturing me. What can someone like you, who only finished high school, say to someone like me who graduated from university? You're way too arrogant. Know your place and act accordingly, she shouted. Martha, who had been listening, agreed with her. Rita is right. What an arrogant daughter-in-law you are. The money you're reluctant to part with was earned by my hard-working son. How can you act as if it's yours and be so hardy? Martha said, puffing out her chest, confident she was right. Unfortunately, both were still unaware of the truth. Brandon recently switched jobs to a company run by a local friend, which resulted in a decrease in his income. As a result, I end up covering the pocket money Rita wants. Even if I explained this fact to them, it would be difficult for them to believe it. Their accusations, based on misunderstandings and prejudices, continued, and it didn't seem like the complex tensions within the family would be resolved anytime soon. I'm really sorry, but I'm very busy right now, so could you please leave? I asked Martha and Rita quietly yet clearly. After dodging their constant complaints and grievances, I finally managed to get them out of the house. As they left with heavy footsteps, I sighed. At that moment, a disgruntled neighbor appeared from next door and, showing his displeasure, said, It's quite noisy, could you keep it down a bit? I'm really sorry. I apologized. I had not intended to be loud, but the actions and words of Martha and Rita had inadvertently caused trouble for my neighbor. I had been careful to live quietly, but this situation arose, and I sighed once again. Hours later, when Brandon returned home from work, I detailed the events of the day to him. Living in an apartment inevitably comes with neighbor issues, Brandon remarked. But I was about to argue back. That's not the problem here. I was about to ask Brandon to address the behavior of Martha and Rita, but he cut me off, smiling cheerfully and announced something unexpected. I've lately been feeling that this house is a bit cramped. You think so too, right? Yes, I suppose. I responded and Brandon continued. That's why I bought a new house with a yard. His words were delivered casually, as if he had just picked up something trivial on his way home from work. I was so shocked that I couldn't immediately grasp what he was saying. You bought a house? Wait, what are you talking about? I asked, unable to hide my surprise. Yes, it's secondhand, but it was a good deal. 
I managed to secure it using my savings, Brandon explained. Then, I eagerly questioned him about when he decided to make such a major purchase and why he hadn't consulted me before buying. However, Brandon seemed inconcerned with my words. Caught up in the joy of acquiring a new home, he casually dismissed my concerns. I was about to lose my temper, but since the purchase had already been made, I had no choice but to accept it. Indeed, the apartment was cramped as Brandon had said, and I told myself that living in a house wasn't a bad thing after all. A few days later, we moved to the new house. However, upon arrival, we were greeted by Martha and Rita, who were already there settling down. What on earth is this? When I demanded an explanation in a trembling voice, Brandon casually replied, Oh, didn't I mention? They're going to live here with us too. Their old home is getting too run down and will be demolished. The land is going to be sold. The construction contract is already complete, and the sales process is underway. Wait a minute. Why didn't you tell me? As I struggled to comprehend the unbelievable reality, I was overwhelmed. Seeing my distress, Brandon continued as if it were nothing. Well then, let me be clear. My mother and sister are going to live together with us from now on. If you don't like it, sleep outside. Brandon's face sported a mean, ugly laugh as he spoke. The moment I saw his smile, something inside me shattered. If that's the case, I'll sleep outside starting tonight. Don't complain about who I'm with. There's no reason to complain. Do as you like. The two of them watched our exchange with glee, laughing as they said, Great. Now that the nuisance is gone, we can use this place more freely. Why don't you just go back to your parents' house while you're at it? Ignoring their mocking laughter, I carried my belongings out to the garden. I then made arrangements to begin living outdoors by contacting someone. The next day, uh, I slept so well. I stretched expansively in the garden of the house Brandon had purchased. It felt like I had awoken from a deep sleep for the first time in ages. After I moved my belongings to the garden, Brandon, as if to harass me, deliberately closed the curtains. He probably didn't know what I was up to outside, but he couldn't keep the curtains closed forever. Morning came, and Brandon finally opened the curtains. When he saw the garden, his face changed. What is this? See, I told you not to complain no matter who I'm with. Brandon pointed at my side, trembling with shock, and exclaimed, but who brings such a big dog into our backyard? My large dog wagged its tail in response. The dog, a Rottweiler, was a type of breed that I had raised back at my parents' home. I had set up a large tent I brought from home in the garden and spent the night there with my dog. That evening, I had called my mother, explained the situation, and borrowed the tent and my dog. I thought not just bringing the tent but also my beloved dog was a good opportunity to enjoy the spacious yard freely. My dog was enjoying the outdoor life, and last night, it was in a very good mood. I also had a fun night for the first time in a long while and woke up feeling refreshed in the morning. On the other hand, Brandon was pale and clearly in a bad mood. That dog, it came from your parents' home, didn't it? Take it back immediately. Brandon is extremely afraid of large dogs. Part of the reason I brought my dog was indeed to spite him. He had been chased by a large dog as a child and had been afraid of them ever since, to the point that he would get scared just by seeing one. Consequently, when my parents first met him, my brother had to take the dog for a walk. But let's leave that story for now. Hearing Brandon's screams, Martha and Rita appeared in the garden, rubbing their sleepy eyes. What's the matter, Brandon? Why are you yelling so early in the morning? What? Why is there a dog here? They both exclaimed in surprise. They too were not fond of dogs, often grimacing just hearing that my parents had a large dog at home. The sudden appearance of the dog threw them into total disarray. Brandon was also disturbed and began shouting for the dog to be taken out of the house. What are you doing? This is just the sort of thing a high school graduate would do. I can't forgive this. I never thought I had such a crazy daughter-in-law. Normal people don't do this kind of thing. You're really out of your mind. You've completely lost it. As I remained silent, the three of them mercilessly criticized me. It's so noisy this morning. 
You feel that way too, right? As I spoke to my dog, he wagged his tail vigorously. He may be large in size, but he's gentle, extremely smart, and kind. However, he shows no mercy to those who threaten his family. Why aren't you leaving? Can you hear me? As Brandon's sharp words rang out, my dog growled protectively by my side. Hearing this, Brandon yelled pitifully. At that moment, there was a whistling sound from the large tent I had been staying in. What's all this noise, first thing in the morning? Good morning, Dad. What? Emerging from the tent was my father. Brandon, upon seeing my father, let out a cry of surprise. Ah, uh, good morning, Brandon. My father warmly greeted him while Brandon just stood there, mouth agape. I'm hungry. Bro, you ate plenty yesterday. My brother chimed in next as he stepped out of the tent. My brother is married and usually lives elsewhere, but after hearing about my situation yesterday, he suggested, let's all camp out in the garden. Don't worry if any problems arise. We're here. Thus, it turned out that my entire family was enjoying a camp out at our house. Good morning, everyone. It seems my daughter has been quite a burden on you all, said my mother as she appeared next. She had a bright smile suitable for the morning, but her eyes were not smiling. When I explained the situation to her yesterday, she was the most outraged. Although she doesn't explode with emotions like Brandon, she harbors anger internally. This was evident from her cold gaze toward my in-laws. Brandon then said, it's been a while. To my family. The energy he had earlier was gone, and he was awkwardly trying to muster a smile. Brandon might act deaf with me, but he can't do the same in front of my father and brother. The reason is that both are very muscular, which intimidates him. My father is a former self-defense force officer, robust and muscular. Even after retirement, he doesn't skip his daily training, and he even placed in a triathlon last year. Moreover, my brother is an active police officer, dedicated to protecting the town and following in our father's footsteps with his training regimen. While my brother's family might be exasperated by his training, for me, he is a reassuring presence. Even the dogs they take for walks are muscular and formidable. Given their long-standing dedication to physical training, it's no surprise that our dog has grown accustomed to participating in their rigorous exercise routines. Now, while I have many things to say, first, I'd like to thank you for allowing us to use your garden. We got to spend a wonderful time as a family. My mother said politely. Martha said you're welcome in response, seemingly out of reflex. Despite the muscular men in the house, it's actually my mother who holds the highest rank in our family hierarchy. Our dog also trusts her the most and sees her as her leader. Even now, it sits composedly next to my mother. My brother and father often say that no matter how much they train, they can't match up to our mother. While she may not possess physical strength, she knows how to exert her influence when necessary. Once, when I was a child in elementary school and a classmate was malicious toward me, my mother spoke directly to the teacher and had the other child's parents call the school. There's no need for extra words. I want to know why you did such a thing to my daughter. Please speak freely, she said. Although always smiling, the pressure she exerted was immense, and it eventually led to the other child and their parents breaking down in tears. At that moment, I made a mental note never to anger my mother. Had I discussed the situation with my family earlier, my parents and brother would have supported me. However, I wanted to avoid worrying them. I wanted them to think I was living a happy married life. That's why, even when Martha and Rita treated me harshly or when Brandon unilaterally decided to relocate, I said nothing. When I contacted my mother yesterday, while she was angry, she was also very worried. You've always been so patient. But I can't bear to see you endure and struggle. You are very precious to me, she said. Although I am now an adult and independent. Her words nearly brought me to tears, and I deeply regretted not consulting her sooner. Now, my mother faces my in-laws with the same stern expression she had when confronting the parents of my childhood classmate. This is the first time my mother and my in-laws have spoken like this since the initial meetings and the wedding. 
They've had little contact since then, so my in-laws likely never expected her to be such a formidable figure. I've heard you insult my daughter multiple times from inside this tent, calling her education inferior because she only graduated from high school, saying her thinking is abnormal, among other things. Now, could you please explain why you directed such unpleasant words at my daughter? The tone she had was polite but assertive, leaving no room for rebuttal, and it's clear it came with a lot of pressure. Each time my mother speaks, you can feel the atmosphere cool down, and her eyes are certainly not smiling. When I looked at my father and brother, they were pale even though they were not being scolded. Our pet dog was also afraid of my mother's gaze. The in-laws facing my mother all had pale faces. Brandon tried to excuse himself. It was just a minor disagreement with Noel, but my mother counted, oh, a minor disagreement? Brandon became even more flustered by my mother's chilly response. Then, he started to blame me. How cowardly of you to call your family over. However, I was not shaken by his attack. When I responded, you are with your family too. Is there a problem with that? Brandon was at a loss for words. He tried to demean me but was clearly at a disadvantage. After pondering for a while, suddenly, his face lights up as if he had a brilliant idea. Then, with a voice full of conviction, he declared, That's it. We're getting a divorce. To think you'd do as you please at home. His voice sounded triumphant. Was this his last resort? Did he think that by mentioning divorce, I would be shocked and apologize? I felt nothing when Brandon mentioned divorce now. My love for him had vanished long ago. With a mix of disdain and calm, I made a significant accusation. I don't mind the divorce, but you will be paying a substantial property division for your infidelity. What? Did you think I didn't know? This is a small town, and an affair with someone from your own company would be conspicuous. Indeed, Brandon had been having an affair with a woman in her 30s who worked at the company run by his college classmate. Since the woman was also married, exposure of the affair was bound to cause a scandal. I had been suspicious of his late returns, but the discovery of a woman's handkerchief and a hotel receipt in his clothes confirmed the affair. There were no detective agencies in this rural area, so I conducted the investigation myself and found a plethora of evidence of his infidelity. The evidence was so abundantly clear, it made me wonder how he could have been so careless. If I submit these to court, there's no doubt I'd win a claim for property division. If that's the case, I'll introduce you to a lawyer friend of mine. Really? That would be helpful. Thank you, Dad. Brandon was shocked that his affair had been exposed, his face turning pale. Yet, he was not ready to give up and tried to retort with a trembling voice. No, this is your fault. You're always at work, ignoring me. To this, my brother immediately responded. My wife works full time too, but that doesn't justify an affair, does it? How self-centered can you be? My brother looked at Brandon with a look of disbelief. As a fellow married man, he couldn't comprehend Brandon's logic. Exactly as my son said, your incompetence is why my daughter has to work so hard. If you had been a more trustworthy husband, it wouldn't have come to this. My father quickly added, criticizing Brandon. Brandon seemed lost for words due to their pointed rebuttals. Martha and Rita, however, supported Brandon's actions. It's clear that the problem lies with your daughter. We will hire a lawyer and seek property division as well. Yeah, even though she says she works hard, her job isn't all that significant. To this, my mother quickly responded, It's your right to hire a lawyer, but do you really think it's acceptable for the person who committed adultery to demand property division? I pity any lawyer who takes on such a case. Could it be that you're lacking common sense? Martha staggered back awkwardly at my mother's sharp retort. Furthermore, Rita, do you even know how successful my daughter is? If you search her name, you'll see the companies she's involved with. And what about that hearty attitude of yours? You don't even work, yet at your age, you're still dependent on your brother and his wife. Aren't you ashamed? Rita's face turned red upon hearing these words. 
Brandon then exclaimed, looking at us while trying to contain his anger at his family being openly criticized by my mother. Why would you say such things to my family? My mother had only stated facts, but Brandon evidently did not appreciate them. Seeing this, I began to speak with a deep sigh. I really can't believe I married such a person. It makes me question my own judgment. What did you say? Have you forgotten what you've done to me? You really think only of yourself. And those two, they say worse things to me than my own family ever did. Calling me the bottom rung because I only graduated high school? A useless wife because we don't have children. Since moving here, I've been nothing more than a convenient errand runner. Don't you think that's far more unreasonable compared to my family? I unleashed all the grievances I had held back until now. Until now, I had endured it without worrying my family, but there was no longer any reason to hold back. Let's break up. I'm sick of being used by you anymore. Wait, Noel. Let's start this through calmly. There's nothing left to talk about. I want to sever ties with you as soon as possible. What could possibly change that? I can't forgive what you've done. Be prepared for the appropriate consequences. I declared and Brandon collapsed to the floor, exhausted. Martha and Rita looked on disappointedly, their shoulders slumping. Shortly thereafter, we began packing to return to my parents' home. Well, I'm going back to my parents' home now. I'll proceed with the divorce and the claims for property division later. I informed Brandon and his family, but there was no response. I sighed lightly, loaded the tent and my belongings into the car, and left my in-laws home. The divorce with Brandon was finalized smoothly. The involvement of the lawyer my father had contacted proved effective. Even the usually assertive in-laws were weak in the face of an authoritative third party. The property division claim was accepted as I had hoped, but Brandon had recently purchased a new home and had no savings left. He sought financial help from his classmate who had employed him, but during this process, his affair with a co-worker was discovered, and his classmate was furious. As a result, both Brandon and his affair partner were fired from the company. In the end, Brandon could only secure a loan from consumer finance companies, using the money to pay the property division. However, the loan came with high interest rates, making repayment very challenging for him. By the way, the woman involved in the affair was also divorced by her husband, who then demanded property division from Brandon. Consequently, Brandon was burdened with paying two property divisions, forcing him to sell the newly purchased home to cover these costs. After selling the house, Brandon, along with his mother Martha and sister Rita, moved to an older apartment with cheaper rent. Brandon managed to find some part-time work, but life was very tough for them. Rita finally started working as well, but without a proper employment history, she even struggled to find part-time jobs. Martha registered with a senior employment center, but job options were limited in the countryside, ultimately burdening Brandon to support all three of them. With only the income from his part-time job, it was difficult for him to support himself, let alone three people. They faced a bleak future. While proceeding with the divorce from Brandon, I spent several days moving belongings out of the in-laws house. During one of these days, a neighbor suddenly approached me. You're new around here, right? I heard you're Mrs. Harris. Yes, that's correct. But the neighbor then expressed concern. The lady and daughter of that house have a bit of a bad reputation around here. They're known to be condescending and to harass the neighbors. We were worried about your situation. Are you okay? If you need help, we're here to offer it. When I first moved to this area, I felt ostracized and thought the locals were wary of outsiders like me. However, they were actually concerned about me. Learning this truth, I relaxed and a smile naturally appeared on my face. There's no problem, thank you. When I mentioned I was getting a divorce, the neighbor genuinely looked relieved and said, that's good. I inwardly apologized for regretting my move to the countryside, realizing the community was more supportive than I had expected. Without Brandon and his family, this place would have been wonderful. After removing my belongings from the in-laws house, I completed the move and the divorce proceedings. All that was left was to receive the final payment of the property division. 
However, on the day of the final payment, I received this message from Brandon. This completes the payment of the property division. Does this settle everything? How about we start over? I had kept Brandon's contact unblocked until the property division was fully paid. But receiving such an unpleasant message made me feel that I should have blocked him from the start. Start over? What kind of joke is that? I would refuse even if you offered me a fortune. Never contact me again. If you try to reach out, I will immediately handle it through my lawyer. After sending that message, I immediately blocked Brandon's contact. Since then, he has had no involvement in my life. After the divorce, I moved back to the city and have been enjoying my freedom. With the funds obtained from the property division, I treated my supportive family to a luxurious wellness trip. The time spent with my parents and my brother's family was an unforgettable, enjoyable memory. Being free from supporting Brandon's family, both mentally and time-wise, has given me more space in my life. While it's good to dedicate myself to work, there was no longer a need to overwork. Being released from the obligation to support the in-laws has also given me financial ease. Having learned from my failed marriage with Brandon, I am hoping to meet someone better next time. In the urban area where I live, being single in my age group is not uncommon, and events for singles in their 40s are frequently held. It takes a bit of courage, but I plan to try attending one of these parties soon. I will never undervalue myself again. Aware that I am the only one who can treat myself as valuable, I intend to enrich my life moving forward.